on YouTube this is Big Juan Robles aka Stan Nelson with Top Deck Gaming and today I'm going to bring you another deck profile uh, this one is going to be highlighting my uh, variation of uh, puppets so uh, with that just know that this deck doesn't have uh, any restrictions or not following types of any uh, ban list or anything like that it's just what I put into the deck so uh, with that uh, let's get right into it with our turn zero ninjas so first off we have two Salamanders. Uh, I run these salamanders simply because uh, they are non-unique, so I can put as many of them on the field as I want, uh, which is always helpful. And this guy's really good because uh, he can give, I believe it's, his combat becomes a support value when he's in the same team with a ninja that with manipulation, so Conqueror, Chio, uh, guys like that. And also, um, you can negate damage to give it to him, I believe. Yeah, so he, uh, he he's a good blocker, uh, keeps your ninjas healthy. Uh, next turn zeros, we have our turn zeros, Conqueros. Uh, this one, uh, Unfazed Assault, I like this one a lot uh, because of the effect. Uh, it lets you uh, discard one puppet card or ninja with manipulation from your hand, and then you can search your deck for a puppet ninja card and then put it to your hand. Um, this helps you set up later game, uh, especially uh, when you have, uh, when you're really hurting and you need a, like a turn one uh, puppet that next turn. Uh, like his effect, uh, it's valid. He's a two zero two zero, and uh, that also has surge, so that comes in handy when uh, you need it, like buff your team power. Uh, next turn zeros, we have two Gara Childhoods. Everybody loves this card. It gives you that draw. Uh, can't really say much about it. Uh, the only downside, obviously, is that if he uh, goes to the uh, discard due to damage uh, from the showdown, uh, you do discard one card from your hand. But three zero, pretty strong. Next turn zeros, we have two Sasori Childhoods. I run him uh, just because he's almost like a BR um, effect. Uh, it lets you look at the uh, cards that your opponents are winning through your BRs, and if any of them are puppets, you can move that one or all of them to your hand. Uh, so it helps negate them getting battle wards and uh, bolster your hand and gives you the ninjas that you need. Last turn zeros, we have Hanari. Uh, Hanari is just a good tech card overall uh, when he comes into play. You uh, look at your opponent's hand, so it gives you that aspect, which is always good that you know what your opponent's playing early. And then if they have a mission card in their hand, you can draw one card and then move one card to your chakra area. So, uh, and that's always fine. Putting the cards in the chakra area is never a problem. Next up are turn ones. We have two crows. I love this card. Uh, when he blocks and he's the same team with Manipulation Ninja, you get draw a card. Uh, so as soon as he blocks, boom, draw a card to your hand, you know, it might, you might be able to get that uh, Jutsu to your hand that you might need for that turn, whatever it is. He's a three support on turn one, fantastic. Again, uh, non-unique, which is kind of the basic uh, idea of the deck. Next up for turn ones, we have two Tamari. This, uh, there's other Tamaris you play, later turn Tamaris have good effects. I like this one just because she's early and she gives all of my sin just plus one, plus one. So her... She gives it to herself. If you have Gar on the field, automatically these guys are becoming a team power seven, which on turn one is pretty hard to stop. Uh, and usually your opponents let you swing through for bad wards. So that's why I run her. Uh, next up, two black ants. <laughs> I think this card's fantastic. Uh, whenever he's battling against another ninja, and if you have a ninja in your team with manipulation, uh, those ninjas that battle against him can't be sent out to battle during the next turn. So it really stops your opponent from, uh, you know, rushing you for battle wards if you block. Uh, he's a 0202 injured, and you can uh, squad him out uh, with Conqueror for their uh, Conqueror Black Ant uh, squad, which is fantastic. I'll get into that later, though. Next up on turn two, so we only run two, Father and Mother, uh, Warriors of Protection and Love. I like these guys uh, just because... They can block up to two of my opponent's teams. <laughs> and the, and my, uh, my set ninjas can't be affected by my opponent's ninjas and uh, mission card effects. So, like, if somebody's running uh, comparative strengths and I have this on the field, uh, they can't negate those effects. Um, so it's helpful, uh, especially when you have a bigger team than your opponent or if they're trying to rush your battle you can block two teams and uh, stop that assault. But uh, it's a good card. Really, really enjoy this card. Next up for our turn threes, everyone, one Conqueror Tactician. Uh, this is probably one of my favorite cards of the deck. Uh, if you don't know what Conqueror does, uh, when he comes into play, I can search for one Puppet Ninja with an inch cost of three or less and put it to my hand. 
Um, and then additionally, during the exchange of Jutsu, I can move one ninja card with an cost three or less uh, into his battling team. So whether I'm attacking or blocking during that exchange, I'm allowed to hit his effect. Boom, makes my team bigger, gives me the ninjas I need on the field, uh, especially for the Jutsus that basically all require puppets. Uh, love this Conkro. He's pretty, he's pretty strong. He's a 3-3. Three, three. And he has Jonin in case you're ever running like um, high-powered Jutsus or Jutsus that require Jonin. Uh, he's able to hit those. Next up uh, for turn three, one Ebizo fishing. I like this card. Uh, I'm glad that uh, I was able to get a foily of him. Been looking for that forever. But uh, this guy says when he's put into play, uh, I can select one. I can move one uh, one ninja puppet ninja in my chakra area or my discard pile, and I can put it into play. So again, uh, it gives you your ninjas back if they're dead. Uh, it also gives you that field advantage. And he has puppet master, so. Uh, he combos well with certain juices. Next turn three, uh, Sakura. The Dance of Sakura. This card is f flipping amazing. For one, Sakura in herself, she is a puppet, so she can use her jutsus. Uh, she has that mental power three, which is good against uh, people who splash mental in their decks. Uh, additionally, she has Surge, which is helpful, and uh, her she has both valid effects. First one is, during the exchange, uh, you can discard a card from your hand or injure one ninja, and then in that case, heal one ninja. So uh, she gives you the heal aspect if your team's being hurt, if your opponent has uh, damaging jutsus, she hits that. So um, that's one of the main reasons why she's in the deck. Uh, additionally, uh, she gets a plus two, plus zero when she's in the same team as a uh, Puppet Master Ninja. So if I have Ebizo, if I have Ebizo on the field, I put her right in front, she gets that plus two, making her a six, uh, it gives you that power. So that's always helpful when you have options. But yeah, awesome card. Let's go right to turn fours. I got two Chios, uh, power of 10. Uh, one of the MVPs of the deck. Uh, if you have a combined total of 10 or more puppet ninjas, uh, ninjas cost on the field, at the end of your turn, you win two battle words. So, you know, she helps uh, later game. Uh, definitely hits uh, those battle words that, you know, obviously you need to win. And getting the uh, plus 10, um, it just cost requirement is not very hard, especially with you know soccer being turn three, uh, being puppet, uh, hitting puppet master Jisoo, something like that. Additionally, uh, if attack your mission, if you have two or uh, less chakra, you can move two puppet ninjas into your chakra area. So she helps there. Uh, last turn four, we have one Baki, able brain, self-explanatory. This guy is busted, love him. And if you don't know, uh, when he's sent out to battle. Or, I'm sorry, when he yeah, was sent to attack, you can discard one ninja and a team by itself. So, uh, definitely hits ninjas off the field. Amazing turn four drop. Turn five, I play one Sasori, Master of Puppets. Uh, I only play him simply for my uh, reinforcement card, uh, but off the off chance that you actually uh, play him, you can't get your reinforcement out. His effect's awesome. Uh, he says when one of your ninjas uses a Jutsu with uh, puppets in its requirement, uh, target ninja opposing uh, gets uh, opposing this ninja becomes a standby ninja. So uh, he's uh, like a pseudo negation. Um, if you don't have things in your hand uh, that negate jutsu cards or whatever it is, uh, fantastic card. He's a five four puppet master. He has mental power uh, for puppets. Fantastic. We have three turn sixes. The first is Kazakage Dignity. Um, this guy's awesome. I only run one of him. I wish I would have run two. But uh, it just seems like a little much, especially a uh, guy run three turn sixes, and for me, it's just that's too much in a deck. I usually run around two. But uh, this guy is, uh, when he's sent out to attack, your opponent must uh, select and discard one of their in-play ninjas. So if you chain his effect with Baki's effect, uh, you can effectively get two ninjas off the field. Um, additionally, he's 5-4, five 5-1, uh, five he's pretty powerful. Uh, but yeah, that effect is busted. And then my last turn two sixes. Third Kazakage. This guy is huge. He's a 7-3, uh, so he's like the lead for most battling teams. Uh, a thing that I noticed later down the road is that he actually has mastery, which is freaking awesome. Uh, getting your jutsus back to your hand, uh, especially his effect uh, when the opponent's ninja would be removed uh, to move to their hand by an effect uh, by any effect you can move uh, it to your battle wards instead, uh, face down. Which is awesome, uh, you can't 
So like if you're using like Hydro Pump and you hit all three ninjas or two ninjas back to the opponent's hand, um, unfortunately you can't just like say I want both of them. You can only use the effect on one ninja, but still the fact that they might be getting that ninja back um, definitely helps. And uh, you know he's he's powerful. He's a beat stick, and I got two foil. I'm pretty excited about that. I'm trying to foil out this deck, but yeah, third Kazukage, awesome card. So that's the ninjas, uh, everybody. And uh, going right into it, I'll jump right into these uh, missions. So for my missions on turn ones, now this is supposed to be another hidden village of the wind. I don't have another one, so that's why I'm using the comparative strengths. Uh, it's still a good card to use regardless, just so you can negate those effects. But uh, this is the um, this is the one I want uh, because you can put a counter on it for every every time you put an engine to play that has a sand combat attribute, and then um, you can use one of the effects according to how many sand engines you have into play. And if you have uh, three plus, you get all your sand engines get plus one plus one during the turn and the next turn, so it stays for your opponent's uh, turn. If you have four plus, uh, you draw one card, and at five plus, uh, you your opponent must select uh, one of their engines and discard it. So he's basically another uh, Kazakage. Uh, so that's why this cards run, especially uh, with puppets. It's very easy to get your puppets all out at the same time. That's why I run the uh, non-unique ones, so I can have as many on the field. I don't have to worry about oh man, this guy's on the field, I can't play another one. But yeah, that's supposed to be two of these. So just for you guys, just for, just some insight, insight for you guys. But other than that, uh, comparative strengths, negation, always good. Uh, turn two, we have two Sword of the Red Sands. Uh, pretty self-explanatory. Let's you search out for a ninja in your deck with manipulation. So if I don't have my Conquerors on the field, I use turn two to search out for my turn three Tactician. Uh, that's pretty much it. Or, you know, if it's later in the game, or Nichio or Ebizo, uh, that's what that's there for. So it's just a search card, helps thin out the deck, get you what you need. Good card. Uh, next up, Two Bonds of Friendship. This card's awesome. Um, it lets you draw two and then move one card from your hand to your chakra area. Additionally, it has a secondary effect. Uh, during my mission phase, I can discard, uh, I could put this card. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, if it's in my chakra area, I can remove it uh, from the game. In that case, I can place a growth coin on one of my sand or leaf ninjas. So it just has that additional effect of giving some additional power to your team uh, if you really need it. But the uh, draw two is really good on turn two, and then giving yourself chakra is really nice. Next up, we have a gift. Awesome draw card. I think it's one of the best draw cards in the game, honestly. Uh, this effect says it lets you draw three, and then you move one card from your uh, hand to the bottom of your deck. So it's really not that big of a deal. I mean, you get three cards to your hand, and uh, you know it just sets you up, gives you a beefy hand. Like I said, one of the best draw cards in the game. And you know that's one thing about Wind. Wind's always has Wind has always had some of the best draw cards, uh, and it doesn't really stop ever. So yeah, good card. And then last but not least, we have two Conks Tenacities. Congress Tenacity is in here just because it gives you that draw too, but I like it specifically for the fact that I can bring a one win ninja from my discard pile back to my hand. So if I need something that's in my discard uh, to give me a little extra boost, uh, that's going to do it for me. Uh, he does, while this is in my chakra, he does give your Conqueror uh, plus two entrance cost, but by that point, I should already have him on the field, or I should have already been squatted out. Uh, so I'm not worried, I never really worry too much about that. Um, but it's good to keep in mind uh, because sometimes, you know, this can be misplayed because you forget that he does have that secondary effect. But yeah, good card. So that was the ninjas, that was the missions. We're going to go right into our jutsus here. For my jutsus, I won three puppet shields. Uh, this card's awesome. I can use it with either a puppet or a puppet master, but considering that 80% of the ninjas in the deck are puppets, um, it's always helpful. It says target one jutsu card being played and it changes the effect of that jutsu to uh, draw one card. So instead of your opponent wrecking your team, they draw a card instead. Um, I never mind them drawing cards. Usually my hand is a lot healthier than theirs. So I don't mind paying in one chakra just to keep my team healthy and safe. Uh, so yeah, that's just like that pseudo negation type card right there. Next up, I play two captures. This is uh, just requirements puppet, and uh, this is target one ninja with a print cost of four or less. 
effect move the user and the target to the bottom of their owner's deck. So considering that um, most of these puppet ninjas that I have on the field are really low cost, um, and this can hit anybody who's four or less, it hurts the opponent big time. I don't mind dropping two team power with like Crow, or the, I'm sorry, with like Black Ant or uh, Salamander. So I don't mind uh, dropping my own ninja, especially if I can get something beefy off the floor. Uh, so yeah, two of these. Um, I just recently got these from the uh, SAC tournament I was recently in. And uh, so I'm playtesting them now, but I know that they're probably they're going to help me win games. Uh, definitely consider this in a puppet deck. It's it's a pretty pretty decent card. And then up next we have three poison Sinmon strikes. It's another just really cheap uh, good puppet card, uh, puppet or puppet master uh, as the requirements, and it targets one ninja battling against the user. The effect says uh, give one damage, so automatically you're giving that ninja damage. Um, and like in one of my previous. Uh, videos, I personally am a huge fan of giving damage. I don't like injuring too much, uh, just because I know that it's, you know, if they're injured, they're going to get that, uh, they're going to die, and you're not worried about uh, just injuring them, and then you're like, oh man, well, that's all I had. So I love the damage aspect. Additionally, you flip a coin, and if you flip heads, the target becomes a standby ninja. If tells, I can draw a card. So standbying them is always good, drawing cards is always good. And then uh, additionally, it's Expert Hiroku, and uh, basically you get to choose the outcome of the uh, coin flip. I don't run Hiroku in the deck, but uh, if I did, uh, I think he sideboarded, uh, so you get, the, you get that option. So you get to control. Good card. Next up, this is, to me, the MVP of the deck, uh, Puppet Master Jutsu. This card is stupid good. The requirements, and I don't know if there's an errata for it or not, um, and... I don't believe that it's banned in the current format that we that I play, but this guy says requirements uh, manipulation card attribute plus interest cost three or more, which is why I run the tactician. Um, so he even con that conco can use it. Uh, the effect is reveal the top seven cards of your deck and place any number of puppet ninjas uh, among them into the user's team in position. Then shuffle your deck. So going back to what I was saying about playing ninjas that have the non unique. Just throw it all out in the field. Uh, you don't have to worry about it. Sakura, I can hit Sakura. I can hit the Kazikage Heka early. Uh, that's the point. And then when you drop Chio, you typically are going to have your 10 um, entrance cost uh, com uh, combination to get those two backwards at the end of every turn. So I run two of these. This game has this card has won me so many games. I can't even I can't even put it into words. Uh, this is the MVP of the deck. This is what the deck is based upon. And uh, if you're not running this, you definitely should. And again, I don't know if it's eroded or not, and if it is, you know, please leave a, something in the comments below. Uh, let me know, because I would, you know, I want to play the game, you know, as fair as possible. And so if it is, uh, let your boy know. And then last jutsu for the deck is good old Hydro Pump. It's just in here because it's stupid. You know, requirements that you cost a five or more, uh, target teenagers move them to the opponent's hand. And so this runs well with the uh, Kazakage that makes some battle wards. And then additionally, uh, expert puppet mode, uh, I'm sorry, puppet master, uh, discard, you discard the targets instead. So with Sasori, with Chio, oh, well, not with Chio, she's not turn five. So actually just with Sasori. But um, yeah, good card. Uh, only run one of it. This is one of the cards that's actually uh, limited in the format that I play. So I run one just for that aspect, but I think two is just too much. So that is my uh, puppet deck, and uh, I'm going to go right into the uh, the reinforcement deck real quick, just so you guys can see what else I play. So we have Gara and Tamari, uh, Dust Tornado. This card's awesome. It's huge. It's super beefy. It's a five support. It's uh, it's part of three. It has mastery, and then additionally, uh, when it comes into play, your opponent discards their entire hand. So if they got something that they're using and they got five cards in your hand and you're worried, you hit this on the field, boom, goodbye all their cards, and then they draw the same amount, minus one. Uh, additionally, uh, your opponent's uh, non surge engines get negative two minutes cost, but by that turn five, I'm not really worried about them you know, putting engines out like that, especially when you hit this card, I typically start having control of the game. I play uh, one Conqueror of Tamari and Gar of the Desert. This card's pretty good. Uh, I hardly ever use it because I never really have all three of them on the field at the same time. But this says when the Sinja attacks, uh, injure target Ninja when the entrance cost, uh, 
less than this ninjas. So inches cost less than four, uh, injure them. And then additionally, your opponent can only play one Jutsu card during the turn uh, that this ninja blocks. So that helps that way. You know, it stops your opponent from uh, negating your stuff when you chain it. This is the other MVP of the deck, Copy of Black Ant. This card to me is busted. Uh, during a mission phase, you can discard one Puppet Ninja card uh, from your village or your chakra area. In that case, you put a poison coin on uh, one of your opponent's ninjas. And then additionally, if that opponent is inch cost, if that card was an inch cost of uh, two or less, uh, you discard that ninja instead. So one, discarding ninjas is fantastic. He is for support, but poison coins are just stupid. If a poison coin is placed on a ninja, they cannot be sent out to battle. So even if you're not discarding their ninjas, you put poison coins on their big beaters and you're shutting them down. Uh, this card is where it's at. This card also is uh, the game changer. It wins a ton of games. So yeah, I run two of those. Next up, we have two Soccer Harnos and Chios. This card is basically the uh, same uh, effect squad card that the Shikamaru uh, Asuma squad is. It lets you draw a card, and then it gives you one battle ward if uh, your team with one or more puppet ninjas wins uh, any victory. I never squad this out just because the Chio's effect of the 10 entrance cost giving two battle wards is way better. Additionally, uh, it's way late game, and then the Sakura healing aspect is just way better. Uh, but yeah, I run two of those. Um, like I said, they never really come out, but they're there. And then last but not least... This is the granddaddy of the deck, uh, Sasori Puppet Mode. He takes forever to play because he's a turn 7, uh, and you have to have Sasori of Interest Class of Fire more on the field uh, to sacrifice to play him. But on the off chance that you actually get to play this card, he basically says you take all your Puppet Ninjas in your discard pile and you put them into play regardless, uh, as if they had non-unique. So if your opponent like wipes your field and you're able to get this guy out, your whole entire team, your whole entire field comes back, and it's hard for opponents to come back from that. Again, it takes a while to uh, get this guy out, but when you do, uh, he he turns the tide of battle for sure. Uh, so two of these guys, it took me forever to get him too because on Troll and Toad he was pretty expensive, and nobody I uh, try to get them from was willing to give them away, and I see why. I mean, one, it's beautiful art. Um, it's an amazing effect, and uh, yeah, game winner right here. But with that said, guys, that is the deck profile for my Puppet uh, Onslaught deck. And uh, if you have any questions about the deck, please, you know, put them down in the comments below. If you liked what you guys saw, you know, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel for additional content. Uh, I try to post every Monday and Wednesday. So, uh, yeah, I appreciate the support from everybody who's already subscribed to the channel, so thank you for that. And as always, for those of you keeping the Naruto CCG dream alive, I salute you. And with that, they want out.